Hi, welcome to NPA teaching. Today we are going to discuss one of the most important aspects that is how to prepare a research proposal. Every day students are seeking help or approaching me by asking how to prepare a research proposal which motivated me to create a video lecture on this topic. For the people who have never done a research or made a research proposal before, it may seem little strange or complicated at the very first stage. But really, it is not so difficult task. Research proposal is the most important part of the entire application procedure for MPhil and PhD and other research projects. And 75% of your acceptance chance of these applications entirely depending upon your research proposal. Well, we should know what exactly a research proposal is and what are the key features of the research proposal. A research is a concise, coherent and compact summary of your proposed research. It gives a brief outline the general area of the study within which your research falls. The major goal of research proposal is to present and justify the needs of the study a research problem and to present the practical way in which the proposed study should be conducted. Before we are going to discuss what is a research proposal, at least we should be aware about what exactly a research means. Research refers to the a search for knowledge or researching in a scientific and systematic way pertinent to the information on a specific topic. The purpose of the research is to discover answer to the question through the application of scientific procedures. So in the beginning of the research is to ask yourself a series of questions like what do you want to study, why the topic is important, what is the relevance of the study, how is it significant within the subject area, what problem will it help to solve, how does it build upon the research already conducted on the topic, what exactly you plan to do, how research is to be conducted, what will be the benefit of your research. So these are the various types of questions which come across in mind and should be incorporated while framing a research proposal. No matter the methodology and your research area you pick, all the research proposal must address these questions. In general, a good research proposal should document your knowledge of the topic and demonstrate your enthusiasm for conducting the study. So you should approach it within the intention of leaving your readers or your examiners feeling like a wow, what an exciting idea and I can't wait to see how it will turn out. Thus, typically a research proposal includes adequate information for readers to assess the planned study and should comprise all the essential components active in the research procedures. The quality of your research proposal entirely depending upon the quality of your proposal writing, but also the quality of your planned project. The exact format and the requirements for a research proposal can vary slightly depending upon the type of research being proposed and specific demand of the institution you plan to submit your proposal. But there are few basics that are similar and are almost always needed in all discipline. What should be included in your research proposal? So here we are going to discuss what are the various items which we are going to propose in the research proposal. That is title of the study, introduction of the study, literature review, significance of the study, objectives of the study, research design and methodology, plan of work and references. Sometimes some of the research authorities are asking to give the proposed budget if it is financed by any authority. First component of your research proposal is the title of the study. Come up with a title for your research proposal. Your title provides the first impression for your audience of your proposal. Your title should be the focus of your investigation. 
your title will vary based on the type of your research you are doing but in general it wants to be concise and descriptive be sure that the title include the key ideas and give the glimpses of your research after reading the title your reader should be know what expect from the proposal and be interested enough to read on the title wants to be clear and accurate background of the study some people are writing introduction instead of background of the study both are the same the main purpose of the introduction is to provide necessary background or context for your research problem this is where you can explain the context of your pro proposal or the essential background that describe in detail why your study is more important the approach to write this section with the thought that you can't assume your reader will know as much about the research problem as you do for this reason you may need to provide some background information about the emergence and evolution of the topic focus here is to dominant trend landmark studies and if appropriate more recent developments note that this section is not a essay going over everything you have learned about the topic instead you must choose what is relevant that explain to that helps to explain the goal of your study the next step is to frame the literature review the literature review is the key academic work in your field of research it is important to show that you are familiar with the most significant research on your topic a strong literature review convince the reader that your project has a solid foundation in existing knowledge or theory here you should demonstrate your ability to critically appraise the relevant literature suggest your skill to incorporate and synthesize the existing literature for that you have to review all the available documents on the topic which may be published or unpublished that contain the information ideas data and evidence written from a particular stand point of view to express a certain view on the nature of the topic and how it is to be investigated and the effective evaluation of these documents in relation to research being proposed so through literature you bring clarity and focus to your research problem by broadening your knowledge base in your research area it help you to contextualizing your work and improving your research methodology it also describe a bigger picture that provide the background and create a space or gap for further research thus review should summarize analyze categorize and compare the most significant works it does not need to cover everything that you have been written on the topic most importantly it should clearly demonstrate the gap or problem that your research project will address by outlining both strengths and the limitations of the previous research ideally at least five other studies should be discussed in the literature review section after you have written the literature review read it carefully and make sure it is clear thus you convince your examiner your planned research will make a critical and considerable contribution to the existing literature after literature review the next head is significance of the study in simple terms the significance of the study is basically the importance of your research the significance of your research will identify the importance of your research work this section is often referred to as rational or relevance or justifications of the study in which you are try to convince your audience that your study is worth doing as you write your significance there is a need to figure out several contributions and benefits of your research study especially why you are undertaking this study write the significance of study by looking into general contributions of study such as importance to the society as a whole then proceeds to downward towards its contribution to the individual and that may include yourself as a researcher 
you start off broadly then tap off gradually to a specific group or a person that is you should follow a deductive approach at the same time you should also justify the needs of your study by considering the gap in related literature that demand attention for your study or where there is a little or no literature identified gaps or where the related literature is available recommends further work vis-a-vis -vis identified gap so these are the various things should be kept in mind while writing the significance of the study now after literature review and significance of the study the next step is objectives of the study research objectives are the goals which are to be achieved through conducting a research it is a research question or it is a research problem you want to find the answer here you are informing your readers that what is your goal and what you want to attain throughout your study therefore it is extremely important to word them clearly and specifically sometimes objectives should be listed under two heads separate heads like main objectives and sub objectives the main objective is the overall statement of the thrust of your research study while the sub objectives are the specific aspects of the topic that you want to investigate within the main framework of the study now if your objectives are specified then the next step is that how to find these objectives that is the path to finding the answer to your research question constitute research design or methodology this section is very important because it tells your research committee or examiners that how you plan to tackle your research problem the guiding principle writing in this section is that it should contain a sufficient information for readers to determine whether methodology is sound so in this stage at each operational steps in the research problem you are required to choose from multiplicity of methods procedures and models of your research methodology which will helps you to best achieve your objective what type of data are to be used and what will be your sources of data whether it is primary or secondary data if it is primary then how to collect the primary data number of samples or procedures and methods to collect the sample what type of techniques or tools are to be used for collecting and analyzing data and also test the external validity etc these are the various types of the questions or things which are to be included in research design or methodology the main objective is here to convince the reader that the overall research design and methods of analysis will correctly address the research problem and to impress upon the readers that the methodology or sources chosen are appropriate for your specific topic the next one is the plan of work and time schedule you should also include an outline of various stages and corresponding timeline for developing and implementing the research including write up of your thesis here i am showing you a format for monthly wise plan of research work and proposed target which is to be achieved within the time limit i have explained here the target starting from the initial process of research up to the end of the research and required time limit of 2 years you can ex expand this 2 years to 3 years 4 years or 5 years depending upon what type of your research work is there lastly we have a reference part reference should be clear complete description of the sources that you were used or consulted while preparing or framing your research proposal as with any scholarly research paper you must cite the sources that you have been used in framing your research proposal in an appropriate format like apa chicago or ml style etc this section should testify to ensure that you did enough preparatory work to the project and not just a duplicate effort of other researchers so here your references should provide reader with a good sense of your grasp on the literature and how you can contribute to it 
it will play a large role about your analysis remember that this is not a simply bibliography listing everything written on the subject rather it should show critical reflection in the selection of appropriate text the next one is proposed budget if you are applying for research project financed by any authority like ugc icssr you will probably also have to include a detailed proposed budget that show how much each part of the project will cost a pro proposed project will with item wise or activity wise breakdown and justification for the same included in the proposal indicating that how will the study is financed you should also make sure that to check what type of cost of funding body will agree to cover and only include the relevant items in your budget here i am showing the sample proposed budget of 15 lakh and see how this 15 lakhs are to be distributed in the various heads of expenditure generally we want a research staffs expenses of field work if any equipments and study materials and other contingencies some sometimes funding authorities are put some restrictions or capping for applying funds in some heads this heads head of proposed budget is not applicable to the research scholars who are applying for mphil and phd but if it is financed by any funding authority then you should also include and justify that why this much of fund is needed for your particular study now students are regularly asking about what is the length of the research proposal or how how long should my research proposal be research proposal may vary in length so it is important to check the check to be the concerned department or authority to which you are applying for research to check word limits sometimes authority may fix the word limit through its guideline generally speaking a research proposal should be around 3000 words or it is 5 to 7 pages which you write as a part of application process once again i am repeating that is what are the various items to be included in the research proposal is that first one title introductions of the study then literature review significance of the study objectives of the study research design and methodology plans of work references and proposed budget i hope you are clear about how to frame or how to prepare your research proposal if you are not subscribed to my channel kindly subscribe to get the updated video by clicking subscribe button and bell icon have a nice day and see you in the next video thank you Thank you.